Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I'm back with another viewer request and this time it's a bingo bag. <laughs> I didn't know it was a thing, but apparently it is. But as usual, I'm going to make this so that it's not just for one purpose. So here it is. This is the bingo bag. It's a drawstring bag and it's got little pockets in on the side for you to put your markers and I'm not sure what they're called. Are they called dobbies or daubers? Not sure. You can put all your little bingo markers in there and keep up your other bits and pieces inside. Of course, it's going to be useful for crafting as well. So if you're a quilter or a makeup artist, you can store all your cosmetic brushes in the side or your craft bits and take it away with you wherever you go. This might even make a nice picnic bag. You can put lots of little bits of cutlery in the side and have some edible goodies on the inside as well. Lots of uses. Come along and I will show you how to make this bingo bag come multi-purpose bag. All right, this is what we're going to need today. I'm using this blue daisy print for the inside part of the bag and that will be the drawstring bag as well. What we need here is 71 by 53 centimeters or 28 by 21 inches. To go with that, we need a piece of fusible fleece that is 35 by 53 centimeters or 14 by 21 inches. What I'm using today is a product called Parlan. I used to use this for many years and have only just recently rediscovered it. So it's a very lightweight fusible fleece like the Matilda Zone that I've been using recently and similar to your Palin as well. It has a much nicer feel to it though. It's still a polyester but it just feels nice. For that we need 35 by 53 centimetres or 14 by 21 inches. Then we need a couple of circles for the bottom of our bag. They are 17 and a half centimetres or 7 inches in diameter. We need two of those. One of them will need to have some fusible fleece on it of the same size and the last thing we need is a piece of fabric for the outer part of our bag and this will be to use as a pockets that's 35 by 104 centimeters or 14 by 41 inches and to the back of that we also need to have that fusible fleece we need 16 and a half by 101 centimeters in just a moment i'm going to show you how to measure circles to the size that you want. Before I do that we have the fabric for the inner bag. What I've done is I folded it in half so we've got the 21 inches or 53 centimeters across here. I folded the fabric in half and pressed that and to half of that I fused that parlan. So we've got our fusible at 21 inches across. Fold your fabric in half and fuse that together. For our circles we'll do the same. We only need one piece of fusible so that will go onto the back of one of my circles and the other one will be for the lining of the bag. This part here that is unstabilized is going to be our lining and this will be the main body of the bag. And then for our pockets we'll fold the fabric in half lengthwise and place your fusible product on one half. You can see I've left it short around the outside edges and around the bottom. That will make sure I've got a little bit less bulk when I'm sewing the seams together later. And all we need to do is fuse it and fold that back in half again. So you can go and prepare all of those pieces. And I'll quickly show you now how to draw a circle to the size that you'd like. So I want a circle with a seven inch diameter, which is about 17 and a half centimeters. What I've done is placed my paper on the fold so I'm going to work in inches just because it's a little bit easier for me to see. I'm going to place the guide of my measuring gauge at three and a half inches which is half the diameter of my circle. Make sure I have enough room on the outside edge. Just make a little mark just on the top of the paper here and then I'll mark three and a half inches out from there and then all you need to do is line up the edge of your ruler 
with that three and a half inch mark and keep pivoting it around until you've made a half circle and until you get used to it just make markings at small increments because it'll be easier for you to join the dots or cut this out. Once you've marked your three and a half inches from the center, you can join the lines or just go and cut that out. And that's what I'll do now. So once you open that out, you're going to have a seven inch diameter circle. Just measure that across and you can see that that is seven inches. So it's pretty easy to make circles in any size that you'd like. This can be drawn straight onto your fabric or your fusible and cut out at the same time. Now let's get back to our project. The other thing you're also going to need is some draw cord. Okay, let's start putting this together. We'll take the long outer piece of fabric and if you fused all of that together, what we're going to do is fold that down and we're going to top stitch all the way along that folded edge. Let's quickly go and do that now. The needles I'm using today are a number 90 or a size 14 and I'm using a stitch length of 3.5 for the top stitching. So there's quite a long piece of fabric that I needed to top stitch here. To prevent this from shifting or puckering as I've sewn, I've actually sewn with the fusible side to the top side of the fabric that's got more stability on it is going to have less movement in it. Okay, with that done, we are now going to make some marks on our fabric and they will be the stitching lines that we need to create our little pockets. The seam allowance that we have is going to be one and a half centimetres or half an inch and we've got our raw edges along the bottom and on the side there. Take your fabric, fold that in half and we'll find the centre and mark that with a pin. With the centre position marked here, take a square or a ruler, line up the straight edge along the top here and line this up here with that center position. I've got the center position marked here and I've also got the stabilized piece of fabric facing up. Next we want to mark 10 centimeter or four inch increments from that center line. So if you're using centimeters and you have one of these types of rulers, line up your 10 centimeter mark on that line that we've just drawn but at the same time you want to line up the top section as well so you want to make sure you've got two straight sides and then mark your 10 centimeters or your four inch distance and you'll do that all the way along so the next 10 centimeters will be on the next line and continue along if you're working with inches then you'll take your four inch line and you'll do the same thing so I've got my four inch line and that lined up along the side. And I can just continue along using that same measurement and making my lines nice and straight. By lining up the top edge and the side, you're going to end up having everything sitting nice and straight. And to do the other side, just flip it around And if you get to the other end and find that you don't quite have enough room to do four inches or 10 centimeters, it really doesn't matter because the pockets are plenty big enough that you can still get your one and a half centimeter or one or half inch seam allowance in there. So the outer pockets, if they're just a smidge less, it's really not a problem. We've marked those lines. We can now take our main bag and 
we have our fusible on one side and the lining on the other. So we want the fusible side faced up. And on this one, we're going to find the center as well. And I'll mark the line in the center. I'll use the straight edge of the fold to line that up. And we only want to draw a line in the bottom section. So when we place this pocket onto our bag, it's going to sit along the bottom here. So the line that you draw on the front here only needs to be seven inches in length or about 17 centimeters. So from the center line, we're going to mark two inch increments or five centimeters. So you'll do the same as we did before. Line up the fabric on that fold at the top and use that line that we've got underneath. And we can go and mark a few two inch lines or five centimeters. And the line on the outside should be our seam allowance. Again, if that's not exact, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have a series of two inch or five centimeter lines across the bottom here. And we now need to open this fabric up because we don't want to sew the lining and the front together at this stage. Now let's turn this around so that we can see the white side. I'm going to make a couple more marks just to get ready for sewing up the side seam. So from the top fold along here, measure down two and a half centimeters or one inch and repeat that. And we'll do that on this side as well. And this area in here is a no stitching zone. So that's just getting that prepared for when we sew up the side seams. Turn this back around, take your pocket piece. Remember to have the fabric opened out. With this one here, it's fine to be folded down because we've already top stitched that. Find the center. So we've got the center line and the center line. We'll line the fabric up along the bottom edge. Try and keep that nice and straight. And then we'll pin that together. So we'll pin that right on the line. These lines are our stitching lines. Take the next one and line that up with the next line that we have here. And you can just use the guide at the bottom to line that up. And again at the top here. And we'll repeat that for the rest of them and on the other side as well. So you can see we've got little pockets being formed in here. And with that remaining flap, you can just line up those pieces right on the very edge. And when you sew this one in place, just sew it with half the seam allowance. It's really just to secure that end in place. So we can go back to the other side. And again, we'll just line up those outside edges. Now we're ready to take this back to the machine and we're going to sew all of these channels in place. And I would start from the center one and work my way out just in case anything shifts while you're sewing. Let's go to the machine. I'm going to keep that nice long stitch length again. That'll also help prevent anything from shifting. I will back stitch at the top and again at the bottom. 
and we just need to follow the line that we've drawn. And then we'll repeat that for all of the other pockets. And on the outside edge, I won't do my full seam allowance, it'll just be half the distance. And I can repeat that for the other half. Alright, with those channels all stitched in place, we now need to secure the bottom edges. So you don't need to go and take any measurements here. We've got the little opening at the bottom there. Just stick your finger in, fold it up until you find the centre of the fabric, and then just push a pleat down. So the measurement of that is about two and a half centimetres or one inch. So you basically want the fabric folded down at the bottom edge here, but you want it away from the stitching lines that you've done previously. You can clip that in place, and this will give you a nice little opening at the top here to put your brushes or your markers. So we'll do that on each pocket. Just find the centre, pinch it together, and then push it down. And that's enough of a pleat for it to be sewn in place. And we'll repeat that on all of the pockets. And we still have the lining section of the fabric well out of the way. So at the moment we're just securing this to the fused side of the fabric. Now that's ready to be taken back to the machine and we'll sew right along there. I'll reduce my stitch length back to my standard length, which is usually about three. When we sew the bottom section, we don't need to sew that with our full seam allowance because we still have the base of the bag to put on. So we'll go halfway between. We'll go about one centimetre or three eighths of an inch. Okay, we have all the pockets stitched in place now. What we can do is take our big piece of fabric here. This side here is the lining and this is the main section. We'll bring the raw edges together along the side and you want to make sure that the pocket sections aren't in the way of the stitching line. This will be our side seam. Line up the middle section and you want to line up these markings that we made earlier. We'll clip all the way down here. We're not leaving an opening on this side. Double check that your pocket pieces are lining up as well. And this being the lining section, we want to leave an opening for turning the bag the right way around later. So anywhere along here, I'm going to leave an opening of about the width of my hand. So that will be unstitched. So we'll go from here up to the mark I have in here with a back stitch. Don't stitch that. Start here again with a back stitch. Continue on. We can back stitch here and leave an opening here and then repeat down to the end there. Let's go do that. So I've come up to the first marking, I'm going to back stitch here and then I'll back stitch at the next mark and continue on. And this is where I'll leave an opening for turning the right way around and finish up. 
All right, our side seams are done. We have our opening at the bottom here. This is the opening for the lining. And we'll take our circles. And this one here has got the fusible fleece attached to it. And that will be attached to this section of the bag. What we can do is fold that in half. And fold that in half again. And we can make a couple of marks in the fabric on the folds. And that can be lined up on our fabric here. So we've got our seam line along here. Fold that evenly across. And we can mark the centre. And that mark we've just made here, line that up with that seam. And then find the centre on this side. And on the other side. I've got three positions marked here and we have the side seam as well. So I've transferred my markings to the wrong side of the fused fabric and we're going to find our side seam which is just along here and with our first marking we'll place that mark along the side seam. It's up to you if you want your seams pressed open or if you want them to one side. Come around to the other side and line up that marking with the other marking that you've made. And we'll do the same on the sides. We've got a marking here. And at the opposite end. Now that we have these four secured in place, we can just ease this around and clip the rest of the circle together. Okay, that side's done and we can do the same on the other side. Fold the fabric in half and again. And where you've marked those creases, just make a little mark on the fabric. We'll do the same here. Mark a crease just along the edge there. That mark can line up with the side seam. Finger press a crease into the fabric and at this side too. And those are our markings for the next circle. Open that out, have your fabric right sides facing each other here and line up that side seam. Again, it's up to you if you want to have your seam going in one direction or if you want to open it. I'm going to open my seams. I will actually just go and press my seams open. And you'll notice that we've got a little hole just here. This is where the draw cord is going shortly. So I'll continue to do this. Line up the opposite side. And we'll do this exactly the same way we've done the outer bag. So I've got my four points marked and the rest I can just ease that around so that it sits in that curve nice and evenly. So these two ends are now ready to be stitched together. I'll actually do that first and then I'll go along and press that. So this is the fiddliest part of the whole project, trying to sew a circle onto that piece of fabric. Oh, and I've gone and dropped all my clips. All right, let's finish this up. So working with circles, you've just got to gently manipulate the fabric around. Try not to have any puckers.
and just have a look at your work and make sure that you don't have any puckers or pleats in there. It's always exciting to do circles and find that you've actually done them properly. Doesn't happen often. And if you're happy with that, go to the other end and do the same again. This end's much easier because you don't have as much bulk in it. And that's done too. All right, both ends are done. We need to clip the corners now. Uh, what I have done, because this is such a bulky end, I've gone and stitched this twice. So what I'm going to do here is just clip up to the stitching line, but not through it. And I'll repeat for this side. Alright, we're almost finished. We've got a little opening here for the draw cord. I've pressed the seam open and the opening is here for turning the right way around. Just even out the edges all the way. We'll do the same at the other end. And once you're happy with it all, we can take this back to the machine and sew this opening closed. We have the lining folded back into the bag to the top of the uh, fusible and I've made two markings. One is two and a half centimeters from the top edge, so straight along here or one inch and then the second marking we've made six centimeters from the top edge or two and a quarter inches and that will be on the outside of this little opening that we've got here so this opening is for our cord we just want to make sure we secure the lining and the main fabric together so that our cord can fit inside that channel let's take that to the machine and do that now I've turned my bag inside out so that I can see my markings and I'll sew all the way around. And since I'm basically top stitching, I've just increased my stitch length back up to 3.5. And once I finish that round, I will come down to the other mark and do the same. So we finished the bag and this is it inside out. So I thought I'd show you how it looks before I turn it the right way around. We've got the base all done nicely. Side seams closed up. And let's turn it the right way. All the sewing is finished. All we need to do is put our cord in. If you don't have a bodkin, you can use a safety pin. I'm just going to clamp that onto my cord and pull it through the fabric. So find the opening and just feed that through. And come out the same hole again. Then all you need to do is tie each end in a knot and you can tie it up and close up your bag. If you have little toggles like this, then we can use that as well. I'll take the raw edges of my cord and I'll just run some tape around it and I'll push that through the toggle. Press that together, feed the cord through and then we'll tie that in a knot. And that's nice and secure. You can always make a double knot if you feel you need to, but this is fine as is. Press the button on your toggle, pull the cord, and your bag is closed. <laughs> that is actually really cute. 
So how do you like this bag? It's not just a bingo bag. You can fit a nice big bottle of wine in here. So if you feel the urge to take a bottle of wine to bingo with you, you can. Um, and I've got scissors, cutlery, scissors, cutters, all sorts of things. So you can use it as a multi-purpose drawstring carry bag or its intended use, which is as a bingo bag. I get asked often if I'm going to sell this product and if so, how much would I sell it for? I did actually buy new fabric for this one. So I've just recently gone and purchased a whole lot of quilting cotton from my suppliers and I wanted something new to play with rather than all my old fabric. And I've also put stabilizer in here that I've purchased. So this one will end up being a little bit more expensive. Unless people ask for them, I'm only going to make this one. I think I will just put $45 on it in the shop. If it sells, then that's good. If not, it doesn't matter. I'll give it away sometime. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.